welcome to another unboxing video from the playersaid.com. My name is Alexander, and today we're taking a look at a title I'm very excited for, and this is Coalition, The Napoleonic Wars 1805 to 1815. This is a game just put out by Compass Games recently, and it's designed by Javier Garcia de Gabiola. So, uh, Napoleonic Wars, the front cover is a very famous cover, uh, from the Battle of Waterloo, and uh, it, you know it's uh, they're formed up in square against the uh, onrushing French cavalry. So, coalition. What is this? This is a game that can play, I think, up to eight people, uh, and it, it or you can play it two player, and it is a grand strategic. Uh, is it two to? Oh, it's two to six. Two to six, not eight. Two to six. Uh, it's a grand strategic Napoleonic game. And uh, basically, you have the two coalitions. Uh, you have the Bonapartists, and you have uh, kind of the, the Allied forces against them. And you divide up the nations. And I think, I believe, that regardless of how many people are playing, you you play with all the nations. So if you're playing with only like two people, each of you is going to control, you know, three members of that coalition. If you're playing with six people, everyone's only got one one kind of nation to control within whatever uh, alliance that you're a part of. Um, average time to play, four to eight hours. So I'm really hoping that this is one of those kind of, whilst it's long, single session games where you can sit down and have a good time with a bunch of people. Uh, I, and I, Napoleonic is also a topic that's very interesting uh, and playing at this scale is fun uh, because it's, you know, it's wildly unpredictable. You're de dealing with the political forms out of things. I just think that's very interesting. So let's take a look at what we've got in this box. First off, we have a sheet of paper with some clarifications. Uh, so it's just like some rules clarifications that was printed to put in there. That's nice. Coalition. The back of the box says three card decks. There's only one that includes all the cards in the game. Okay, great. So just some clarifications on some of the rules and the contents of the game. We also have, and just so that we're clear, this is their new style linen finished, extremely thick uh, two inch boxes, which I very much appreciate. And this is a heavy game because I believe the map's mounted and there's cards and stuff in here as well. Um, some of the older style boxes, they, you know, they're not uh, they're not old Worthington or MMP bed, but it was the thinner ones that would bow. These are really like extremely sturdy, which I very much appreciate. So we have a bag of D6s, which are sealed for freshness. And those are, again, they've had these in a couple of their games, which I really like this style. I'm not even that old, but they're extremely bold pips on them, and they're more squared off dice, and the colors are just very clear. I really like those. Bag of bags, we'll need those. And this is the singular deck of cards that they talked about. And these are, I believe, event cards. Oh, there's a couple different kinds of cards. We've got event cards are these blue ones. Coalition cards are gray. And home cards are brown. So we'll take a look at some of those later and just kind of see if we can't figure out what those are. Home cards, coalition. All right, we'll kind of keep those off to the side and we'll have a little nose around those here in just a second. He says. So. Let's take a quick look at the rule book. So the rule book we have in semi-gloss, and we are looking at, let's see, this is set a, like example of play. So if we ignore the example of play, this is set up with initial deployments, rules for three to six players. So for playing with just two players, which is probably a lot of people out there, 16 pages of rules. And I'll be honest, I played a lot of Compass games, and there's a lot of white space on here. And what that means is, is that it's not as many rules as 16 pages might sound like if, if, uh, if this is a, one of your newer war games and you're worried about it. Look at all these huge explanations and diagrams. Like it's not 16 pages of Victory Games or Avalon Hill where it was just like, just text. <laughs> so uh, I, it should be, frankly, based on that, very easy to learn. I'm, I'm, you know, and, and the games that, that are grand strategic scale are usually not massively complicated with technicalities and movements and things and zones of control and all this stuff that you've got to like get down into the nitty gritty of in a hex encounter. Usually it's, put my units out, it's, uh, we're in areas and we're doing mouths. Usually not that insane. So 
I'm very excited for this. That should be fairly easy to learn, honestly. There is a play aid card on the back that you can photocopy for all your players if you've got lots of them, which is nice as well. Counters. Let's talk about counters. These are grey core, pre-rounded, frankly, huge counters, considering. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Those punch extremely easily. And the best news is, I will try to show you this, not a single nub or piece of fluff on those. So that just tells me that the printer that they used was excellent and I'm not sat here with a little hobby knife shaving off like middle nubs that you get with some other publishers and things like that. So excellent, excellent, excellent. We got two counter sheets. Uh, so it looks like we've got Spaniards, Belgians, uh, what do we got? Uh, is this, I should know this, but I don't. Is this Austrians, Russians, French, English. I believe that's correct. If I'm wrong, let me know. I believe that's true. And then we have a couple of uh, other, other kind of markers here as well. But that's it. These are, some of them are double-sided, it looks like. Like Northern has two, and then he has a one damage side. A bunch of them don't, though. A bunch of them are single-sided. But yeah, those are extremely nice counters. So I'm very happy about those. All right, play aid card. I'll give me two of them. And we have our Attrition Matrix, Sequence of Play, Battle Matrix, Surrender Table. And those are single-sided. So I guess if we're playing with lots of people, we'll have one coalition on one side of the table and one on the other. And frankly, you can just put these next to it either side. There's fairly large text, so I don't know if I'm handing that around reading it. But if you wanted to photocopy those, you could easily do that. Is that different from what's on the back here? No, this is identical. So you could just photocopy this and hand them out if you wanted to. That way you're saving a little bit more on the color. It's got a nice colorful background on it, whereas this one doesn't. So it's going to be a little bit easier on your printer, I guess. And the last thing that's in the box, at least, is our fully mounted map. And we will open this up. He says, if I can do it without messing up. All right. And uh, it, it kind of what you would expect, right? It's Napoleonic, so oh, here's Central Europe. So we've got uh, Spain, Portugal down here, France, oh, Confederus, Confederation of the Rhine. That's what they call it. Okay, great. Oh, Prussia. It was Prussians, not Belgians. Prussians. I was being an idiot. Austria. Basically, all the different things on here. And what we're looking for is uh, our little tracks. So we've got up here, oh, let's see if can we get this in shot. I've got, I've got uh, game turns, abbreviated game turn track. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if you, uh, there's a short version of the game. That's very interesting. That could be very interesting. Uh, VP track, recruitment points, economic points, all those kinds of things that you would expect from a game like this. The scale that you're playing at, basically. And then we have our event and coalition uh, holding boxes here, both for the card card decks and discard piles, but it's not it, Seemingly this is areas. I got an area here, and I'm probably gonna have to siege this fortified Paris as well If we go to Spain, we've got uh, Zaragoza and Genoa uh, Gib Gibraltar, Cadiz And it is it uh, Badajoz They are all fortified spaces. I don't know if you have to take all of those to be able to Control Spain, I'm not quite sure on that one, but it uh, could be something very interesting. But I'm interested to see if we can get lots of people together to play this with six people, especially if it can play in, if we can play it in six hours. The reality is, is that's half a day. <laughs> so we could still play something else as well later that day. And that's just, that's, it's a value game. If it can be good and enjoyable and I can have lots of people together, we can have a good fun social time and play a game, and it doesn't take 12 hours, which, in my experience, a lot of these games will want to do, then I'm having a great time. Uh, that, that, that's what I'm kind of looking for from this. So, let's take a quick look at the cards and see if we can't get a little indication of what we've got here with those. So, 
the home cards, which I presume are fixed and are given out to Confederation of the Rhine, United Kingdom, the Low Countries, Kingdom of Portugal. Kingdom of Portugal surrenders if Fortress of Lisbon is captured. The United Kingdom surrenders if invaded and it has no armies in the United Kingdom. So you can't send everyone away because you'll just get invaded and then you're going to lose. So those are your home cards. It looks like they give you some special rules and tell you what your revenue is on them as well. So I think everyone's going to have a number of those based on who they're playing. Those are, those are kind of separate. We have the events cards. So the event cards are with this blue border. This is, uh, and this is a lot of text. This is a lot of text and it's quite small. So just, you know, if you need a magnifying glass, get one. Uh, this is smaller text than I think I've ever seen on any other CDGs. But a lot of it's quite dense. Sometimes it's not, but just know that that's what's going on. We do have historical paintings on all of these, which I appreciate that it's not just like illustrations. I love it when they get together and get real artwork from the time. I just think it's, you know, because then you go and see it in a museum and you're like, ooh, I've seen that before. <laughs> I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. It makes me, it really adds that, just that extra little layer of, of feel and flavor. And these are our coalition cards. Fifth Coalition, Seventh Coalition, Sixth Coalition. Austria is pro United Kingdom. Roll one die. So it looks like this is the coalition cards might change who's allied with who, so you can never guarantee what sides you're on. That's very interesting. As the war progresses, people might switch sides and things like that. That could be very spicy indeed. So again, that kind of aspect of it, where you're all sat around a table, you think one th things are going one way, and then someone switches sides, or someone drops out of a coalition, and all of a sudden <laughs> you're weaker than you thought, or you suddenly have the upper hand in something, and you can pull a kind of a sucker punch on someone. Very interesting, always fun stuff like that to play with. So, I think that's everything that comes in coalition. Uh, I am very, very, very excited to play this game. Now, we might play this two-player, but we're going to try to get together as many people as we can to fill this out to a six-player game. That might take us a little bit of time. It might be just after the new year, but we are very excited to play this. And uh, appreciate you guys tuning in very much. I've been Alexander from PlayersAid.com.